Good evening. Welcome to the Spring Hill broadcast. Welcome to our Word and Worship celebration. Uh, thank you so much. Please come on in. Please like, share, and also subscribe if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel. But no matter what platform you're joining us on, whether it's our Spring Hill website or if it's uh, the YouTube channel, do know that uh, we're glad that you're here. If you're joining us from somewhere in the Gainesville region, we invite you to join us on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. for our morning uh, worship celebration. But if you're joining us from outside the Gainesville region, somewhere else in the state of Florida, somewhere else around the United States or somewhere else around the globe, do know that we have prayed for, planned for and prepared for the opportunity to be able to share together in the word of God. And we're praising God that he's given us this platform uh, in order to uh, study the word of God together. Come on in and hit a thumbs up and like and uh, also put in in the chat uh, places uh, to let us know that you're here. The word of God says in Psalm number 150, praise ye the Lord, praise God in his sanctuary, praise him in the firmament of his power, praise him with the mighty acts, praise him according to his excellent greatness, praise him with the sound of the trumpet, praise him with the psaltery and harp, praise him with the timbrel and dance, praise him with the stringed instruments and the organs, praise him upon the loud cymbals, praise him upon the high sounding cymbals, let everything that has breath. Praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. May we pray together. Father, in Jesus' name, we say thank you and we love you. We praise your name because of your wonderful acts and your works. But God, we worship you because of who you are. We pray now, our Father, that you'd open our minds and help us to understand, soften our hearts and help us to spiritually receive. We'll give your name thanks, praise, honor, and glory until the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. These are your servants' prayers. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, God bless you, and thank you uh, so much for joining us for uh, this worship tonight. Uh, we would uh, pray that everyone is doing well and uh, that God uh, is blessing you where you stand in need and that you're continually praying and continually reading the Word of God. Every day, every day pray, every day read the Word of God. Prayer and Scripture a day will keep the devil away. Uh, I love the Lord Jesus, and I love His Word. Join me in His Word. Psalm number 119, uh, verses 65 through 72. Psalm number 119, verses 65 through 72. Uh, when you have found it, the word of God reads, uh, Thou hast dwelt or dealt well with my servant or with thy servant, O Lord, according unto thy word. Teach me good judgments and knowledge, for I have believed thy commandments. Before I was afflicted, I sent, I went astray, but now have I kept thy word. You are good and you do good. Teach me your statutes. The proud have forged a lie against me, but I will keep thy precepts with my whole heart. Their heart is as fat as grease, but I delight in thy law. It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might learn thy statutes. The law of thy mouth is better unto me than thousands of gold and silver. The word of God for the people of God. This is the word of God. Thanks be unto God. Uh, today or tonight, we want to uh, study from uh, the word of God, the truths that the word teaches about God. The truths that the word teaches about God. The truths that the word teaches about God. So here are some truths that God's word teach us. When we study the word of God, we learn some truths about God. Let me say this, that worship of God can only emanate from an understanding of the truth of who God is. Quite often we'll attend worship celebrations where uh, people will just simply be running, jumping and shouting, but there's been no declarative truth. There's been no uh, real uh, declaration of the word of God. And if you ask people why we're shouting and and what, what is it that causes the shout? They really have no reason for it. They, they cannot communicate any clear rationale. Well, friend, may I share with you, that's not worship. That's not praise. That's just having a good time. But when we soberly think and consider who God is and consider the things that God has done, then that's what prompts and that's what brings about our worship and praise of God. Furthermore, let me say this, that the more you study God's word, the more it causes you to worship him in a more deeper and more intimate and a more uh, intense way because you understand more. This is the word of God and this is what God says because God has used his word, his word to reveal himself 
unto us and to teach us about who he is. He does that through his holy word. And so here are some responses and some truths that God's word teaches us about God. Number one, in verses 65 through 67, we learn that God is good. We learn that God is good. God is good. In verse 65 and 67, uh, we learn, number one, that God blesses us. God blesses us. It says, you have dealt well with your servant, O Lord. Here David says, when I look at my life, uh, Lord, you have given good things in my life that you have uh, given to me uh, your grace. You've given to me your mercy. You've given to me your love. And Father, I thank you for that. Lord, you have treated your servant well, just as you promised. His word has established that he would do what he says and that he would bless us. And here David teaches us that God has dealt well with us and that God has done what he did according to his word. So if the word of God declares it and if the word of God says it, then we can depend upon it. In Psalm 16, verses five through six, it says, Lord, you are my portion and my cup of blessing. You hold my future. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places, and indeed I have a beautiful inheritance. What David says is, God, when I stand back and take a survey over my life, like the surveyor would come and look at your property lines, he said, when I take a survey of my life, my property lines, the boundary lines, have, have boarded me in, blessings on every side. And uh, my, my dear pastor, Dr. T.W. Jenkins, used to sing uh, after just about every sermon, every time I look around, the Lord is blessing me. He's blessing me right now. And friend, when you look at the borderlines of your life, when you look at all of the things that could have come to pass and the things that you could have gotten into and the things that could have gotten to you, the Lord had the border and the boundary lines fixed that it was blessings all around. And we thank God for that. God really is good. In Psalm 30, verse 11, the Bible says, you turned my lament that means my sorrow. You turned it into dancing and you removed my sackcloth and clothed me with gladness. You put on sackcloth as like a burlap sack. It was coarse and hard and rubbed your skin wrong because you were in sorrow and in grief. And he said, you took off that uh, a burlap sack. You took off that sackcloth that was rubbing against my skin and, and causing rash and irritation. And you clothed me with gladness and joy. I'm here to tell you, God will exchange your sorrow for joy and he'll turn your lament into dancing. That's how good God is. But then we are, we're, we're thanking God because he's guaranteed our blessing. He said, according to your word, God's word is dependable. Now understand this, feelings are fickle, but God's word is faithful. Feelings are fickle, but God's word is faithful. And then you come on down and you look at, at verse 66 and 67. Look at what he says. Teach me good judgments and knowledge, for I have believed thy commandment. Here he asked God, he said, God, give me good behavior. Help me to behave according uh, to your word and according to your will. Good behavior originates from God's law, and it is the only true goodness that we'll ever come to. Uh, understand this, there's no good that lies within us. So how are we going to do what's right? We have to follow God's holy word. Since God is blessing us, we ought to want to do what's right according to God's word. Psalm 72 verses 1 through 2 says this, God, give your justice to the king and your righteousness to the king's son, and he will judge your people with righteousness and your afflicted ones with justice. The prayer is that, God, we may sit high, but we still have minds that are down low in the gutter. So, God, what we need you to do is elevate our minds and help us to rule well and do what's right. You know, you can be somewhere and uh, think that uh, because a title and position has been laid upon you, that you have what it takes to operate in that space and place. But if you don't have the spirit of God leading and guiding you, if you don't have the word of God leading and guiding you, you'll still run off the tracks and you'll still make a wreck of things. Why? Because we need God's word and his law and his standards to be our standards and to help us. Proverbs chapter eight, verse 20 says, I walk in the way of righteousness along the paths of justice. 
Lord, I'm trying to do what's right. I'm trying to do as you have called me to do and do it the way you called me to do. And I'm trying to walk. That means to daily live and to continue in the teachings of God. Verse 67 uh, says this, before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now have I kept thy word. Look at what he said, before I was afflicted, I went astray. He said, I found trouble when I got out there on my own. When I tried to do it my way, I found that uh, it was nothing but trouble. There is a way that seems right unto man. That's what the word of God says. There is a way that seems right unto man, but the end thereof are the ways of destruction. Can we not see that in our society today that one of the tragedies and challenges that we face today is everybody wants to do what is right in his own eyes. And the more we do what we think is right, the more trouble we get into as a society. The more we go our own way, the more we get into trouble individually. The more our families go away from God and against the teachings of God and the truths of God, the more our families deteriorate. The more churches go away from the standard of God's word, the more churches continue to decline and spiral towards death. Why is that true? It's because God has a way and his way is always better than our ways. His thoughts are always better than our thoughts. And David said, he said, when I, when I started doing my own thing, he said, life got chaotic and, and, and I went down. Some of us grew up in Christian homes. We grew up in Christian families that we were taught the word of God. We did some things not because we weren't taught. We did some things because we flat out rebelled against what we had been taught. And we, we found out that as we rebelled, that it caused us to have to deal with the consequences of our bad choices. Now, you may be dealing with some issues around you in your life. And, and for, for some of you, not all, not all, but, but let, me just, let me just talk to those that might be in that place that I was in uh, and, and, and continue to be in every now and then when I, when I go against uh, what God says. Uh, you might be in a place that, well, Lord, why? Why am I dealing with this? What is, what is happening? Oh, it's so unfair. Well, no, friend, understand this. You're grown and, I, and, and we're all grown. And, and when, you, when you're grown and make choices, the fact about it is you still have to deal with the consequences. And the difference and the reason I talk about those that are grown and of age is because when you're children, mom and daddy can come along and try to fix it for you and cover it up and, and try to deal with it for you. But when you get to be grown and on your own, at some point, uh, as Mama told, uh, said, uh, every tub has to sit on its own bottom. And at some point, you've got to deal with the consequences of your choices. That's what David said. David said, I started doing what I wanted to do, and I had to deal with the consequences of my choices. He said, I strayed, and this is what happened. He said that I was afflicted. I had problems, but now I have kept your word. He said, Lord, things are a little bit better because I'm keeping your word. Times got hard. But God is still good. And when I started to, to do what God told me to do, then things got better. God is good. Then number two, the next truth that teaches us that God is true. God is true. God is good, number one. But then number two, God is true. In verses 68 to 70, God is true. Notice what he says in verse 68. You are good. You do good. Teach me your statutes. He says his very nature dictates that he is good. Notice what the text says. You are good. Not you do good. You are, do, you are good. And because you are good, you do good. So, Lord, teach me your word or teach me your statutes. The very nature of God is good. He is good. He is holy. He is righteous. That's the nature of God. It's, it's a part of who he is. You can't, you can't take those things away from God uh, because he, 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 uh, it, it would make him different than who he is. God is good. That is who he is. You and I just try to do good. You and I try to live righteous. You and I try to live holy. But God doesn't have to try. It is who he is. God is is good. Psalm 100 verse 5 says, for the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endures throughout all generations. Psalm 106 verse number one says, hallelujah, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. 
Psalm 107, verse number one, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. Psalm 136, verse number one, oh, give thanks unto the Lord for he is good and his mercy endures forever. God is good. That's his very nature. It's, it's his very nature of, of who he is. But also we understand this, that God does good. Everything that God does is for the right reasons and for the right purpose. He is good. Goodness is sought to understood through, his, is only understood through God's word. There are three dimensions to God's goodness. The three dimensions. Number one, his goodness comes out in his love. And his love is his tender-hearted affection for his people. That's how we know God is good, because he's loving. That's how we know he's good. Uh, then number two, we know God is good because his love shows up in his grace. His love shows up not only in his love, but his love shows up in grace. This is the demonstration of his love through the benefits that are undeserved. Because God loves us, he extends to us grace. He loves us in spite of who we are. And in spite of who we are, he gives us grace. What is that? Those are the blessings we receive that we don't deserve. I tell you, God is good, but not only his love, not only his grace, but I'm really glad about this one. And that's his mercy, mercy, the manifestation of God's love uh, by it is the manifestation rather of God's love by withholding the things that we do deserve, uh, like judgment and like uh, his wrath and like uh, 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 to, to be uh, to see condemnation. I'm thinking of John chapter five, verse 24. I believe it is verily, verily, I say unto you, he that hears my word and believes on him that sent me has everlasting life shall not see condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. The reason that we don't have to go to condemnation is because of God's grace and, and mercy. His mercy held back what we didn't deserve. And I'm on my way to heaven because of his grace. He, he, he sent me to heaven by a belief on the Lord Jesus Christ. So his, his nature is good. Then his, uh, uh, although God's nature is good and it causes God to do good in everything that he does, there are some people that don't accept the goodness of God. Can you imagine that? There are some of us that won't accept won't receive and won't and won't uh, be grateful for the goodness of God. And so our nature denies it. Nature denies it. In Psalm 119, verse 69 through 70, look at what he says. The proud in the Holman Christian, it says the arrogant have forged a lie against me, but I will keep your precepts with my whole heart. He said, I'm dealing with some people that their nature is different because they don't have any God in them. So their nature is deceitful. It's shown uh, by how they came together and put together and manufactured lies. Look at, look at what he said. The proud have forged a lie. That means they went into the, into the, 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 the welding shop and they put together some false stories. They manufactured some things about me that were just not true. He said, but even though these arrogant people came together, those and the reason they're arrogant is because they think they can do something against God's child uh, that counteracts the blessings that God has already given. Remember in the preceding verses, David said that you set my boundary marks uh, with your blessings. He said, you, 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 put, you put my boundaries of blessings around me. And so there are some that think they are so that are so arrogant that they think that they can take you out of the place of blessing, praise his holy name, uh, based on how they fabricate lies. But listen, let them lie. You stand on the truth of God's holy word. Stand on the truth of God's word. Hold on to God. Trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. And the devil in hell can't send you to hell because you are in God's hand, you see? And so he said, they forged a lie against me, but I will keep thy precepts with my whole heart. He said, despite what they do, I'm going to be consistent in my faithfulness to you. He said, now they're not going to get me to fight their fight. No, I'm going to fight this fight on my knees. I'm going to fight this fight in prayer. I'm going to fight this fight in consecration. I'm going to fight this fight in humble submission 
to Almighty God and according to his word. Listen, my dear friend, God is good and you need to remember that and God is true. When people tell lies, that's all right. God is true and so you follow him because when they lie, the truth will come out. Why? Because God is true and everything he does is for the right reason. Then look at the next verse. Uh, uh, 69 says that. He said, I I'll follow, uh, I will keep your precepts. Then look at verse uh, 69, clause B. And he says, I'll do it with my whole heart. He said, I'm not going to be half-hearted at it. I'm going to do it with everything that's within me. I'm going to follow God's word and I'm going to do it with love, appreciation, and adoration with my whole heart. Even though others are deceitful, I will still be true and God's word will still be true. Verse 70 says this, their heart is as fat as grease, but I delight in your law. What imagery that he uses there. When he says uh, their hearts are fat with grease, he said they're insulated by sin. They can't feel remorse. They can't feel sorrow. They don't have any regret for their actions. Why? Because their heart has been cauterized. They've, they've, got, they've got insulation. They, don't have, they have a heart, but if they, and if they do, they can't feel anything. Some people can do some horrible things and never have a conscience about it, never have any conviction about it. Well, that's because their hearts have waxed cold. Uh, and this is the imagery that he uses here. Daniel Webster said, if we abide by the principle taught in the Bible, our country will go on prospering and to prosper. But if we and our posterity neglect its instruction and authority, no man can tell how sudden a catastrophe may overwhelm us and bury our glory in profound obscurity. If we don't follow God's word, then the work of these evil and, in, uh, and the enemy will prevail and they will do it without conscience. He said, but I delight in thy law. He says, I, I, I'm, although they have done these things and they have become insensitive, my heart is more sensitive to your holy word. Friend, do you delight in the word of God? Do you love God's holy word? He said, I will delight in your, your law. In Psalm 40, verse number eight, he says this, I delight to do your will, my God. Your instruction lives within me. I'm glad to follow the word of God and to not let my heart be cold. So God is good. God is true. But number three, God is greater. God is greater. Verses 71, 72. Number one was God is good. Number two, God is true. But the third thing God's word teaches us is that God is greater. Look at verse 71. It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might learn thy statutes. Are you going through troubles? It's good. Are you going through difficulties? It's good. Are you going through some sickness right now? It's good. Are you dealing with some family issues? It's good. Are you dealing with some personal uh, issues? It's good. Are you going through some marital issues? It's good. You say, well, Pastor Taylor, you, you, you must have bumped your head or something, or maybe uh, you, you got some uh, oxygen not going to your brain. What do you mean it is good? Well, that's what the Bible says. That's what the Bible says. The Bible says here, it is good for me that I have been afflicted. It's, it's good for me that I have been afflicted. Why is it good? That I might learn thy statutes. Great are the afflictions created uh, and great adjustments for me personally. This is what he what he said. Great afflictions created renewed passion for God's word. Three things afflictions will do for you. It'll force you to request and repent in prayer to God. It'll, it'll force you to pray better to God. Request and repent in prayer to God. Then number two, the reason it's good, afflictions are good, is because it'll cause you to refocus your viewpoint on life and God. You'll reprioritize some things. And then number three, the reason that it's good is because you'll read more of God's word to seek a better understanding. You'll request more, you'll repent more, you'll refocus better, and you'll read more. That's why he said, it is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I might learn your statutes. I, I want to learn and understand your statutes. He said, if I hadn't been in trouble, I, it I, I wouldn't have prayed as much as I prayed. If I hadn't had some trouble, I wouldn't have refocused my priorities and I wouldn't focus on God as much as I am. If I hadn't had the trouble, then I wouldn't have read your statutes and read your word as much as I have. Friend, you ought to ask yourself, 
how is God using this trouble that I'm in in order to get me closer to him? Because ultimately for the child of God, we know that the word of God teaches all things work together for good to them who love God and are called according to his purpose. You know what trouble does? It drives us closer to the, it should drive us closer to the savior, to the only one who can help us in our times of trouble. It ought to, trouble ought to cause the sheep to try to get closer to the shepherd. When they see a wolf out there, if sheep have, have uh, uh, any eyesight or, or have any notion that there's danger, they ought to run and go find the shepherd. They don't run away from, they don't run to the danger. No, they run away, uh, they don't want to, uh, they run to the shepherd. They don't run away from the shepherd, they run to him. Friend, are you getting closer to the shepherd? With every trouble, with every trial that comes in your life, you and I ought to be getting closer to the shepherd because he is a good shepherd. Then he said uh, in verse 72, I have some great affluence. The law of thy mouth is better unto me than a thousand pieces of gold and silver. You know what he says? God's word is priceless. He said it's worth more than the trouble I've been in. It's worth more than silver. It's worth more than gold. It's, it's, it's worth more than all these earthly trinkets. God's word is a treasure. Do you know you have a treasure? But some people got, got a treasure and they got dust collecting on it. Some people have a treasure and they haven't, haven't gone to check it in a while. You've got more treasure in this word of God than there is in Fort Knox, than there is on Wall Street. We have a treasure. And also this treasure is permanent. God's word is permanent. Its value and its longevity are worth uh, unlike the financial systems of this world. He said silver and gold. You know, one of the things that is interesting is that they have what they call the, the uh, commodities market. And uh, it tracks the price of silver and gold. And depending upon what's going on in the, in the stock market and depending upon what's going on around the world, the price of silver and gold can go up, but sometimes it can go down. Friend, can I tell you this? Some people have gained much from holding on to their silver and gold. But I tell you what, if you hold on to the word of God, it'll never go down. The value just always goes up. And the more of it you get, the better it is for your life. There are three places God's word is more valuable than money. Uh, God's word is more valuable on a deathbed. Money is not valuable there. God's word is valuable in the valley of the shadows of death. Money is not valuable there. God's word is valuable to David in Ziklag. Second Samuel was the place of unanticipated ambush by the enemy. Money couldn't help David there, but God's word could help him there. There are some times when God's word is more valuable. God's word is valuable when we're besieged by the hosts of hell. Money is not valuable there. God's word is valuable when the sickness persists and there's no remedy to be found. Money is not valuable there. But God's word is also valuable when you have been betrayed. Money is not valuable there. David found out in his life that God's word is valuable. And friend, that's my testimony as well. There is nothing more precious than me uh, to me than Jesus. Let earth and its treasures be gone. I'm as rich as I can be when my Savior's face I shall see. I'm happy with Jesus alone. I pray that you'll come closer to the Lord Jesus who died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. Do remember this. God is good. God is true. And God's word is valuable in our lives. And it is greater than anything else. God bless you. Have a great week.